I ordered the Athlon Argos, which is a 8 to 34 by 56, what was that, 56 scope from Amazon. This is the bottom end model. It was uh, $299.97, something like that. And for a $300 rifle scope, if it had, it has all, all the options that, that a person would really love to have. 56 inch objective lens, tactical turret, even has shims for the zero stop, which you know works nice. Illuminated. Of course I managed to kill the battery immediately. First focal plane. Mill knobs. Mill reticle. And eight to thirty-six. The power set, yeah, the power settings are visible while you're like, you know, while you're set behind the scope. Even comes with the lens cloth, the Allen wrench for your screws for your uh, once you slip uh, once you go to slip your uh, knobs to zero it. And uh, a nice color brochure tells you how everything works on it. Problem is, it's a $300 rifle scope that has all these great options that a lot more expensive scopes have. So, first off, it's made in China, which that in and of itself is not a bad thing. The Chinese are whipping our asses on stuff like that but let's face it odds are there's somebody chained to the table you know producing this so where do you oh you also comes with lens caps so and they're nice ones and they all they work fine and everything uh, Problem is with a scope like this at this price point, and even though it's nice and heavy duty and it feels solid, this is an SWFA, Japanese made, 10 power fixed. This particular one, I have two of them. This one has a minute, uh, quarter minute knobs, but it has the mill radiant. Uh, there's no radiant uh, dots, so that's kind of goofy. And, but yeah, it's a hell of a scope, and for $300, you know, you can drive nails with it. So, what you're giving up on this $300 scope is since you have all these great options on it, the lenses, they're okay. They're usable, even up on 36 power, or 34 power, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's usable, but, yeah, you know, if you're using it for, as like a spotting scope out, you know, longer range, you're going to suffer a lot of eye strain. That's just the way it is. You know, they, they haven't gotten to the point where the they can manufacture high-density lenses and put them in a $300 rifle scope. Uh, you get down there about 25 power, 28 in there, in the lower powers, it's very usable, very nice. But on this high end, especially when it's, you know, when it's gray and dingy out, like you have in the fall, like it is now. I mean, it's nice and sunny today. My first day out with it, it was a sunny day like it is today, but the I went out the following day, the temperature had dropped 30 degrees, 
it was overcast, there was a light rain, so, and it was towards the end of the day, so the light was very limited, and that caused it to, uh, you know, up there on the higher powers is a lot of ice when you go in there. So if, this, if you're shooting a 50 or 100 round uh, match or just trying to you know, shoot all day with it, it's going to start to fatigue you quickly. Zero stop worked fine. I was able to, I think, use three shims so you can drop it all the way down, hit the zero, hit the zero stop. And bring it back to the zero without any problem. That worked fine. Problem is, I zeroed at 100 yards using a known load. Matter of fact, I just had this scope on the rifle earlier than the day. Now, the load was a 168 grain match bullet firing at approximately 2500 feet per second using an IMR 4064 about 42 grains 42 and a half grains and um, CCI primer hard rifle primer I've been using basically that same load for years out of this rifle and it's shot some pretty pretty awesome groups so I zeroed at 100, and then I wasn't able to get onto the range, so get to the 200 yard range for the following day, which was perfect because then it gave me a chance to really experience, so or, or experiment with it. So zeroed at, at 100, my first couple shots at 100 just to or 200 just to play with. I kept it at zero and. Uh, Put my ballistic information into the uh, Streelock Pro. Six clicks up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fired a few rounds and it it, it was fine. It, it I actually had to go up I think seven for that particular load. But then of course there was a 30 degree difference between the time I took the chronograph information and the load from the following day. So that would explain that. Anyways, I moved it back to six, then moved it to zero, fired around, went up six clicks, fired around, went back to zero, fired around, went up six clicks, fired around, and did that for ten shots. And it actually was not returning to zero worth a damn. And then with the uh, at, on the 200, it was hitting actually about an inch and a half low, but then it stabled, or it stabilized, and the last four shots were actually you know, a, a decent little, you know, inch and a half group, so, but it was like three inches low from the uh, point of aim. So, between the, the, uh, glass just not being all that forgiving at 34 power it's not so much the glass though it is milky the eye box is very unforgiving at 34 power up here in the higher powers and the glass itself is milky looking uh, yeah th those are two pretty uh, harsh criticisms but the, the big thing was that it wouldn't return to zero and that's the whole idea about having target turrets like this is you can set it put your zero stop hit your zero stop come to zero and in theory you should be punching the bullseye out at a hundred or wherever you have a zero I normally do it at a hundred then you should be able to move up your six eight whatever how many ever notches or how many ever clicks and you should be real close and if you spend some time at the range practicing and, and testing you know exactly where you need to be and then you should be able to hit your zero stop come to zero and you should be there at zero you, you don't actually even have to hit the zero stop but that's good because then you know you're not lost in your time 
problem is it doesn't want to return to a precise zero. You're uh, uh, like almost a three inch group at a hundred. So, so I'm gonna strip it down, put everything back into the packaging and ship it off. And um, in about three days, on uh, Tuesday, the eight to 34 uh, Helios will be coming in, which is almost the exact same scope, but it's made in Japan as far as I understand. And it's got, it should have better glass and better turrets on it. So, oh, one more thing about the turrets. It uses a single Allen screw or Allen wrench. And I prefer that much better over the three Allen screw setup like what the SAW SWFA or the Vortex or a lot of other scopes use. So, so yeah, like I said, I'd spend the other $200 and at least go with the Helios model. But maybe someday they'll get it down to $300 where it all works nicely.